Final round of the AMA Toyota Motocross Championship presented by FMF for 2006. We're at Glen Helen Raceway for the giant RV Glen Helen National here in San Bernardino, California. Round 12 of 12, yep, that's it. It's over. It will be when these two races are done. I'm Brian Trevor along with David Pingree and Aaron Bates working for us trackside as usual, interviewing winners. And we'll get to her in just a few moments here. Beautiful day for racing. The course is prepped up real nice and a great way to end the season, David. Yeah, it sure is. They made a lot of changes here to the Glen Helen track this year, added on a side track, which is called the REM track, normally done for small weekend races and things like that. They added it into the pro track this weekend. It added to the lap times. They're, they're almost three minutes long, and um, there's some rocks over there, some bad things to it as well, but the riders like it for the most part. And the Fender guitar will be given to the winner here. That was the trophy. There's James Stewart on the number seven Kawasaki, looking for big things out of him this year. Here's our point standings, Carmichael, of course, has already wrapped up the championship, and so today is really a parade of honor. Let's go to Aaron Bates, pre-race report. It's been since 2003 that he's competed in a less than perfect season, but he was actually able to wrap up this series one week earlier than he did last year. Ricky Carmichael, once again, here we are. Is there anything that you can say about this season that hasn't already been said? You know, uh, just that uh, I've won less races this year, but I, I won the title a week earlier than I did last year. And, uh, dude, just super pumped. Can't believe it. And uh, really, really happy. You know, uh, we, we've had stiff competition and, and some great races and uh, just super pumped. Now, you have stated that next year you're not competing for a championship. It's going to be a partial season for you, but you keep saying we'll see what happens. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, you know, everyone always saying, oh, you can't retire, you can't retire, and what would you do if this and that? My plans are to, uh, you know, to, to, to race a limited schedule and not have that pressure of uh, going for a title all the time and ready to race some races and have fun and, and do other one-off events. And... Uh, you know, to, to get me to race a, a full season, something spectacular would have to happen. So you can, that's why you can never say never, but my plans are to do what I told you guys, and uh, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to doing something else. The best of luck today. Ricky Carmichael looking to go out on top. Well, I think uh, what, what that means, something spectacular would have to happen. If, if he goes out and wins the first three rounds and his speed is uh, as good or better than James Stewart or the next second place guy who appears to be James Stewart, and he's got a—he's clearly still the man. I, I don't see him—I don't see him quitting. And I, and I think he wants to leave that door open in case that does happen. What if James? Uh, well, we don't wish it to happen. What if he gets hurt in Canada? Then uh, Ricky could go out and ride at 80% and still win races. So, well, the something spectacular could also have dollar signs in front of it. You never know. But I would say that at this point, Ricky Carmichael doesn't need a whole lot more money. James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael, the fastest two in practice. And uh, what about Ivan Tedesco, speaking of Makita Suzuki? I tried riding this week. I actually rode this week, but I just didn't feel like I was quite ready for, for a track like Glen Helen. And uh, I'm just going to get ready for the U.S. Open now and uh, really looking forward to it. So Tedesco's plans, at least on the near future, are uh, somewhat more known now. The U.S. Open of motocross, Kevin Windham getting ready to go there, as long as Davey Millsaps on the number 118 Honda. The order of business today is Glen Helen's final event of the 2006 season. Here's our Honda starting lineup. Carmichael will start from the favored position. He'll pick his spot, and all the rest of these riders will uh, head out behind him here. But for Ricky Carmichael, you know, that limited season, that schedule, what's going to happen, well, the whole sport pretty much revolves around him. And with him saying he's going to do a limited schedule, it puts a lot of pressure on Ivan Tedesco. And Suzuki even told him uh, at some of their functions, including the, the 250F intro they had this weekend, that they expect him to be the number one guy for Suzuki, and they expect him to be up there uh, a potential race winner. So a lot of pressure on Ivan's shoulders for next year. Glen Helen National underway. James Stewart with a late charge into turn number one. Does he come out with the whole shot? Apparently so. James Stewart on the number seven Kawasaki gets out in front, and he's followed immediately by the number four Ricky Carmichael. So the two principal contenders in motocross racing today are out front together. Hopefully we can get a good battle going here at the last last round of the year. We had some great races earlier on in the season. James, uh, of course, having a couple bad crashes that slowed his uh, early season charge, but seems like he's a more patient, wiser rider at this point in the year than he was at the start of the season. Well, it's going to take something like that to uh, 
pull that razor edge off of how he was riding earlier. There's always that edge of disaster, too, and the disaster get, did come up and bite him a time or two. So James Stewart out in front. Let's see if he really will be the heir apparent to the Ricky Carmichael crown, the future star, the future champion of Supercross and motocross. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Michael Byrne running in third spot right now. Good run for the number 26, Kawasaki. Burns, uh, he's got something to prove. He doesn't have a job lined up as of yet for next year. And a good good finish, strong finish here today will definitely keep his name in the back of team mechanics and, or team managers' minds when they're looking to sign a rider here in the next several weeks. Stewart and Carmichael both kind of picking their way tenderly through this first lap. And even at that, they've pulled away from the rest of the field. Burn a distant third position right now, probably eight or nine seconds behind Carmichael, who's maybe three or four seconds behind James Stewart. And you see that triple step up, step up again. This is into the new section of the track. This is all new from years past. This is a, a, a little racetrack that they have local races on the weekends, and they've added it into the national course this, this year. And some of the riders like it. You can see there's quite a few rocks in it over here. Um, a lot of the teams are running moose tubes instead of actual tubes in their tires to prevent flats. So uh, it's sort of mixed reviews, but I think for the most part, people like it. And, and they do like the fact that it makes the lap times longer. There are, upwards, uh, you know, almost three minutes long. It makes the motos go by a lot quicker when your lap times are longer like that. Stewart and Carmichael, Carmichael and Stewart, we've talked about the two of them all year long, and right now it is James Bubba Stewart leading Ricky on his Makita Suzuki number four. And uh, there's a section of the racetrack there that uh, has gotten developed a lot of ruts here over the course of practice, lights, and now this first motocross moto here. Yeah, they call that flounder freeway there. It's always, uh, they overwater it intentionally and uh, try to make it kind of a ruddy mess. And it works every year. That's exactly what it is. Stewart going for a tear off there as he one hands it over some of the smaller jumps. Ricky Carmichael's right there behind him. No serious competitive move out of Carmichael. Burns somewhat a more distant uh, in the third position there. We just got a glimpse of his Kawasaki number 26. And you can see they went through a tight section there just before and after the finish line, but the rest of this track, as you see him just pinned there at fourth. Oh, Ricky squirrels it a little bit, but uh, this track is fast. These guys are, are wide open, uh, a majority of this track. In fact, a lot of the teams are having to run larger gas tanks, the big aluminum tanks that hold a little bit more fuel because these guys are just, they're running them dry. Carmichael up around the outside. Yeah, you can see that right wrist cocked full wide open on the throttle most of the way around the Glen Helen Raceway here for our giant RV National. And Carmichael and Stewart, again, neither one looking very aggressive at this point in their uh, body language or in their style. Carmichael biding his time behind Stewart. Stewart just putting a good lap together uh, and hitting his marks. But the two of these guys are so much better than everybody else. No one else is even in the picture. Well, it's been that way all year. You know, part of the reason they might be taking it a little bit easy, you see coming down that hill, it's pretty muddy. They put down a lot of water in between motos here and uh, to keep the dust down for fans. Uh, but what it does is make it very slippery the first few laps for these guys. This uh, California soil doesn't really absorb the, mo absorb the moisture as well as a softer, loamier, sandier soil like we would have back east. So it gets very slick when you put water down. And, and uh, as you can see, these guys are kind of gingerly coming down those hills. They're not really charging yet. Riding the front wheel down the hill and the back wheel up. We'll be back in just a moment. Craft and scooters. Glen Helen Raceway and a young fan enjoying James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael battling at the front of the field. Well, there hasn't been much of a battle yet. It's more or less follow the leader. Stewart is the leader, and Carmichael's content to follow him around for the time being, at least. And he has been patient. Normally you see him getting all over James immediately and trying to make a, a pass by, but so far he's just been content to sit back there just outside of the roost and um, just kind of watch his lines and follow him around. Carmichael on the number four, Makita Suzuki, James Stewart using the number seven this season on his factory Kawasaki entry. Now Carmichael getting a little bit closer and the crowd starting to whoop it up a bit. Up the hills and down the dales of Glen Helen Raceway in front of a record crowd here, a big crowd at least. Don't know about a record, but because the course is so much bigger, it's hard to tell. They're all spread out around the hills here. There goes Ricky. Yeah, Whoa. Ricky goes by and swaps ends. Stewart rails around the outside and repays the favor. They're side by side. Listen to the crowd now. Yeah, they're getting the race they came to, to see and paid for. Yeah, this is some racing here. 
Stewart maintains the lead after several exchanges of that position. So a little preview of things to come here as Carmichael starting to show some signs of wanting to fight for the win. You know, James had faster lap times in the second practice. Oh, here comes Ricky again. He goes by and gets the block pass going into a left-hander. That was a big step up. I don't think I've seen anyone do that so far today. Well, Carmichael has a way of pulling moves out of his bag of tricks that no one else has ever seen. And now he opens a little bit of a gap on Stewart as they park it here in a tight right-hander. How'd those two guys get in that one little spot there? <laughs> There's two. Two fellas standing in one little spot on the racetrack, whipping a towel around. That's pretty interesting. Carmichael with the lead over Stewart. Let's see if James has got something to answer back with here. Well, most of the season uh, here, the last half of it anyway, hasn't there hasn't been an answer when Ricky does that. He goes by and puts a gap on you, and that's the last you see of him. Well, an old friend of mine used to call it the Slip Gatiki, which was an acronym for so long it's been good to know you. S-L-I-B-T-K-Y. Ricky's just done it to James again here. Let's see if it's for good. Still early in the moto, and James is hanging close. Take another look at this exchange. These two guys went after each other pretty hard. And I don't know if James has been doing this and just missed it this time, but you can see Ricky having to seat bounce that thing, really compress the suspension to get the lift to get up that far. He said, I haven't seen anybody do that yet, so that was uh, the first time I've seen it. Nice move by the man who's the best in the business, Ricky Carmichael, still leading James Stewart. Stewart running in second position. And lots of fans and the mechanics at track side are having uh, a very entertaining race going on here. I don't know if the track's just starting to come in or Ricky just feels like it's time, but he definitely looks like he's riding more aggressive. He's picked up the pace. Trying to cut the lap times down. A little bit of dust getting kicked up there on a spot where the water is uh, run out. Yellow flags being waved on the course here. Not sure exactly what that's all about. James Stewart running hard. Where is Ricky Carmichael? No Carmichael. Oh. Stewart is the leader. The yellow flags were because Carmichael has gone down. He's back up again. Oh, but that, no, he's hurting. That left shoulder is hurting. He can't, he's not going to hold on to the handlebars. He's one-handing it around the track. And not because he's winning. Now, look at this. How tough is it to climb this hill with one arm? Well, you don't do it unless you have to. You can see him shaking that thing off, trying to, he must have augered in there with his shoulder. But, yeah, he can't even keep it up on the bars. He's definitely got a problem with it. Oh, he, yeah, this is not good. Ricky Carmichael, of course, with the motocross donations uh, coming up. And a first DNF. Is it possible that Ricky Carmichael will not finish a race for the first time? Wow. Everybody's looking. Everybody's watching to see. There's looking. There's Kevin Windham. They're not watching K-Dub. They're watching for the number four. You can see the asterisk guys were standing there on the side of the track kind of with their arms up like, you know, you need to pull off. What do you get? What's going on? And, yeah, Ricky's heading in. He's done. Yep. And he's got a bad shoulder. His right shoulder. Uh, he's had a lot of injuries on that before, but his left shoulder is good. So now, not so good right yeah, now, not so though. Good right now. So he's trying to find his way off the racetrack. Meanwhile, James Stewart has picked up the lead. Probably had to have seen Ricky down on the track, or at least off the course, and not in front of him. So he knows that he's the leader, and at this point, has no competition. Well, obviously, the championship's already been decided long ago, but this has major implications for the Motocross of Nations event coming up next weekend, where he's supposed to be teammates with James Stewart. Well, Stewart is the leader. Carmichael is out of the race, apparently, and what a development we have here at Glen Helen. Is big air. How do you make up ground while you're in the sky? Well, here at Glen Helen, they, they've added some big jumps. This triple step up step up combo that they put in is, is huge and, and when you do it it is at least a second or two a lap you can see Millsaps there having to bounce again and then not carry as much momentum into that next one here you see Ricky gets a clean run at it compresses his suspension he lifts with his knees and you can see right there he taps the rear brake to control the attitude of the bike in the air it'll drop the front wheel when you do that because he tripled he's allowed allows him to carry more speed into that next jump which adds up to at least a second or two every lap James Stewart leading moto number one here at Glen Helen. And Ricky Carmichael out of the race. So an 
enormous development here in a career that has been virtually without DNFs. Here's Aaron Bates in the pits. Well, we've rushed back to the Suzuki pits to find out what went on with Ricky Carmichael. Obviously, he's gone down, and as you can see by the condition of his bike, it was a pretty big get-off. We haven't heard quite what's happened, but we have heard rumor of what's taken place. Apparently, he's favoring his left-hand side, possibly his shoulder, and we've even heard rumor that it could possibly be his collarbone. He's wearing Goose's pants today. I know it's probably just as stressful for him as it is for Ricky, but for Ricky Carmichael to have a DNF at a national, it's got to be bad. Well, when she said he's wearing Goose's pants, that means he's got uh, a, a patch on the back of his pants that says for Goose. Uh, who's been his mechanic uh, throughout his time at, at Team Honda and at Team Suzuki? They've been a, a pretty good pair, winning a lot of races and championships along the way. And He's been doing that all, all the end of the season here, just sort of as a little tip of the hat to the guys that have helped him along the way. And to have a DNF for Ricky Carmichael, I mean, we have to dig through the record books. He's done, what, 120-plus consecutive nationals without a DNF. So that's 240-some, an injury DNF, 240-plus 200 races without an injury or without a DNF due to injury. So it, big news. And for James Stewart, probably a little bit of a hollow victory at this point. He was leading Carmichael. Carmichael passed him and then went down in front of him. Of course, we've seen that. We've seen James do that, where, where he was in front of Ricky and, and, pa and crashed. Well, Ricky's last mechanical DNF came in 98, uh, and he did miss a season two years ago uh, with a knee injury, but he was injured before the season started and just pulled out of the Supercross series entirely. So, um, yeah, this is, this is a bummer for Ricky. You know, he just wanted to come here, I'm sure, and close out his career. Uh, with a, with another win, which would have been pretty standard for him, and uh, this is a terrible way to go out, and it's hopefully nothing that's going to be too major, but, you know, when Ricky pulls off the track, it's got to be a pretty big deal. This guy can ride through a lot of pain. Um, he, he refuses to take painkillers. He's just very hardcore about it that way, and um, I've seen him ride through separated shoulders and twisted knees and different things, but to see him the way he was really... I mean, he pulled off. He didn't even try to really ride hard again. So it's got to be something pretty significant. Well, we'll keep track of the implications, of course, regarding the motocross donations. Uh, the fact is that the, there are no implications per se with, with regard to the Glen Helen National here. It is uh, Ricky Carmichael out of the race and James Stewart leading and already starting to celebrate a little bit here. What appears to be a win in moto number one. Yeah, and, you know, you say it's a hollow victory. I think James will take him any way he can get him at this point. Uh, it's been, uh, they've been pretty slow to come here the last half of the year, and uh, I think this is his third of the season, so I think he's glad to have it. Well, for James Stewart and, of course, his fans, they'll take it any way they can get it indeed here, as Stewart appears to be well on his way to a victory here in moto number one, and with Ricky Carmichael out of the race, uh, and perhaps questionable even for moto number two, uh, James might have a pretty clear path to that overall win that has eluded him since uh, quite a bit earlier this season. Oh, even doing tricks over the jumps. That was that was a horseshoe, not quite a heel clicker. I don't think he got his boots to touch. John Dowd used to have that same problem. He said he couldn't get his feet to touch when he did a heel clicker like that over a jump. Called it a John Dowd horseshoe. <laughs> Well, there are those of us that can't get our heels to touch if we're sitting in a chair in the living room. So doing it over the handlebars of a motorcycle is completely out of the question. But James Stewart, you saw the graphic there a moment ago, his last moto win was at Washougal in the second moto. So he is a pretty happy guy right now, celebrating uh, quite vigorously as he takes the checkered flag and the victory for moto number one here at the giant RV Glen Helen National in San Bernardino. And uh, his mechanics, big smile on his face, and smiles all around for the man that just earned the victory in moto number one. As we take a look at our Suzuki moto results, Stuart Wyndham and Millsaps running two and three once uh, Ricky Carmichael was out of the race. Travis Preston and Michael Byrne rounding out the top five. And with that, let's go to Davey Millsaps. This was the track that came up and bit him last year. This year, not quite the case. Davey, last weekend you kind of had a knee injury. It looks as though you're back feeling healthy again. Yeah, you know, last weekend, first moto, or second moto, I went down the first lap and popped my knee out. And, you know, it's been hurting ever since. I didn't really ride this week and, you know, just came out here. Last year this track got me good to, to trip to the hospital. And, 
You know, I just haven't had good luck here, and I, you know, I'm thankful for third place. What is it that about this track that's made you excel? Well, I think it's just determination at this point. You know, my Honda, my Sobe Samsung mobile Honda is uh, incredible. And, you know, we struggled at the beginning of the season. And, you know, the guys just kept their head down. They worked hard. I mean, they worked as hard. They worked harder than I did. And uh, they got me up here. Now it's just determination. And I want to I be up here. And uh, I got one motor to go. I'm excited about getting second in the series. I know uh, a lot of bumps and bruises, guys going down and being out. But nevertheless, that's part of motocross, man. And you just got to uh, take the good and the bad. And I'm glad to be up here. Our Racer X Hole Shot Award. James Bubba Stewart on the number seven Kawasaki comes diving through at the last second on the inside and holds it to the stripe and held the lead in this race until Carmichael passed him, then he got it back again. It's a bummer, you know, I felt really good today. I just had a few mistakes in the beginning and I uh, felt better once he got by me and saw his line. So uh, we'll just go back and get ready for the second moto and uh, see what happens. Now, I know that you wish Ricky absolutely no harm whatsoever, but in a sense, is there, are you kind of glad finally it was his turn? No, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't ever wish anything bad on people. You know, I, I love Ricky. You know, we've been great. You know, team, not teammates, but you know, teammates basically racing on the track. And uh, I hope he's all right. We got to go over there and show the world that um, we can do it over there. So he'll be back. Congratulations on a sweet success. Thank you. Nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1 800 AMA Join or Visit amadirectlink.com, the AMA, rights, riding, and racing. Now with that, let's take a look. Even though Ricky Carmichael uh, may not go into motor number two, let's go into the mind with Ricky Carmichael and a review of his career. Well, Ricky's known as the GOAT in the sport and uh, the greatest of all time, and I, I think it's fitting. This, there isn't another athlete, motor, motor sport or otherwise, that has done what he's done, statistically speaking. And... Um, you know, there's not a better champion for this sport. He's, he's a great ambassador for motocross, and uh, what he's done since 1997, becoming a professional, is just absolutely amazing. And every time, even today, we saw him making a pass on James, just just doing something incredible. You go, wow, how did he do that? He just he makes it look so easy, and uh, he's been doing that ever since he started racing professionally. A look back through the uh, through the numbers that Ricky Carmichael has carried on his machines, the different machines he has ridden to championships. Of course, we all remember him starting out on the Kawasaki's and identified him with the green bikes for so long. Binghamton in 1999, wearing the number one, wearing a 125 championship. And then with the more traditional number four, he just kept on winning. He's gone through so many stages in his career. You see him put a little jack move on that Honda rider there, but he's gone through so many different stages where, uh, you know, he's had to learn his first year on a 250 when he was number four on that Kawasaki the first time. He struggled in Supercross. He had so many crashes and injuries, and it took him a long time until he finally buckled down, and, and he and Johnny O'Mara went to work and said, hey, I don't want to finish second anymore. You know, I want to win, and uh, they put together a program that he's been on since, and and it works, obviously. He's been unstoppable. Aboard a Honda, same scenario. Winning races, winning championships, and having problems along the way from time to time, but getting up and going after it again. Two perfect seasons for Honda, wearing number four and earning yet more number one plates. Now we've got excerpts from an interview with Ricky Carmichael. You can see the whole thing. Go to amaproracing.com and order the year-end DVD. And I'll be the first to say I'm not the guy I'm not the most talented guy out there. So I'm not the most natural ability. I don't have the most natural ability of anyone out there. But uh, I think the one thing that's pulled me through is since I was a little guy is just, you know, how much I work and how much I ride. And uh, I, I don't think that I ride necessarily more than everyone else. But my program and is is just super solid. You know, I, I know where I'm going. I don't just do things just to do it. Yeah, I've 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 come to terms with it. You know, I, uh, you know, this week has, it's been weird, you know, just, I still, even though, you know, I'm, there's no title on the line this week, I still did a lot of things, you know, still worked hard and, and, and still going to work hard. I'm um, still going to train hard all the time next year. I got my trainer aboard and uh, we're going for it. So I, I don't, I don't know when it's really going to sink in, probably when I don't go to a race you know, several weekends in a row, and that's it, you know, no more points.
I hate to lose when I know that I have a good chance to win. But, you know, if we go to a batting cage and, and you just tear me up, it's not going to make me mad because I know I'm not good at that. But if I know we're very similar and we're equal, then I'll be, I'll just be like, dang, you know. I, I have a lot of flaws, I, you know, as far, I, I, I need to be a little bit more responsible, you know, when it comes to, to being just a human being and being around the house and doing things around the house and, you, you know, being a husband and, and this and that. I just, you know, you can't let your wife do it all, and basically she does. And I know a lot of it is because my sport. So uh, I look forward to being more responsible. That that's a huge uh, that that's a terrible trait that I have. Is I'm very irresponsible. To sum it up, basically, I just you know I'm just a normal dude, and and uh, I love all that stuff, man. I love football games. I love baseball games, and I love being a normal guy. And and, and the racing is just it's what I know. And, that, and that's why I do it, and I love, I love winning races and just racing races for that matter. But I also like normal, normal things. And once again, go to amaproracing.com, order the motocross year-end review video, and see the entire Ricky Carmichael interview. As uh, James Stewart is sporting his motocross donations uniform and scheme on his bike there, as he will represent the United States and England. It's a nice look. And both he and Carmichael were supposed to be running at this moto, uh, just to uh, give everybody a preview of what's to come next weekend. But uh, it's kind of a somber mood down here. Carmichael is not pushing his bike to the line. Let's go to Aaron Bates, who may have a word on his condition. Here we are catching up with Alden Baker, Ricky Carmichael's trainer. Alden, obviously an upsetting moment there that just took place in that first moto for Ricky. What can you tell us what's going on with him? Well, Aaron, you know, it's hard to say at these early stages. Uh, we're going to get him off to get an MRI check and, and hopefully also an X-ray just to see. But it seemed like the, it hopefully not broken. The way he could still move, in, move it, although he's in a lot of discomfort, but he could still move it, so that's a good sign. And everything looked, I mean, obviously swollen, but not uh, like things were protruding. So that's the, the next good sign. But he'll get it checked out, and then we'll know more. You know one thing for sure, if Ricky pulls off a DNF at a national, he is one tough dude, it's got to be pretty bad. Yeah, he said it was, you know, real tough to pick up his bike and he kind of figured then that something's not really right and then when he tried to ride off and actually pull on the clutch and stuff, it was just too much. He said, you know what, at this rough track you can't be messing around with that. So. Well, he wanted to go out on top, not the way he wanted to end this season, but wishing him a very speedy recovery. All right, well, there's some of the word as we take a look at our Honda starting lineup for moto number two. Some of the word on uh, Ricky Carmichael's condition. Uh, you know, what, what do we know? Well, I know he did, did run over to the Asterisk medical truck as soon as he got off the, off the bike, and they did do an x-ray, and it came out clean, no broken bones. So at this point, the best guess is that it's some type of soft tissue damage. It was obviously painful for him, so there, there is something going on. Um, and, and he's got a, a private jet charter tonight with Townley and Wyndham to head home. And, He'll get to his doctor Monday or Monday morning and, and uh, find out what's really going on. Moto number two underway. Ooh, very close for the whole shot. Not even going to call that one. Two guys crossing the stripe there almost together. And as a traffic jam ensues behind them, Davey Millsaps on the number 118, along with James Stewart on his number three Kawasaki that he'll be riding in the motocross the nations. You see James, uh, if you look in that first turn, he kind of was coming in wide. Millsaps had the inside, and he cut back under and made a great pass to get into the lead right in that first or uh, second turn there. And uh, kind of hard to recognize him in that number three garb. Obviously, uh, we'll only be running that this moto just to kind of show everybody what it's going to look like next weekend in England. So it's James Stewart in front of Davey Millsaps. And as they come down the hill, Michael Byrne again. Uh, Job hunting, as you said earlier, in moto number one, perhaps for 2007, is showing himself extremely well here. And Kata in fourth spot on number 14. And coming into that right-hander there, that's where Carmichael went down earlier. And you see these guys kind of slowing down to go through there. there there's some very big bumps and kickers that come into that turn. And um, apparently Ricky came into there, just was kind of hopping through it, and he caught his front wheel in a hole, and it slapped him to the ground. And that, uh, that quick stopping motion uh, when he hit the ground is what injured his shoulder. So well, we're hoping the best for Ricky. Well, that's what they say. It isn't the fall that hurts. It's the sudden stop at the end. And uh, yes, indeed, we do wish the best for Ricky Carmichael, not only because 
Well, we just love the guy, but we hope that he's okay for the motocross the nations next weekend. Uh, hard to tell with soft tissue damage like that, but we wish him the best. Good race in here between Kevin Windham and Michael Byrne. Windham getting the best of it there, and he likes this track. He already said that on the podium from moto number one. The smog here, as always, thicker than Kevin Windham's beard. Always uh, ends up hurting your lungs. By the end of the day, you can uh, you can barely take a deep breath. It's so thick and uh, just unhealthy. Can't be good for you. I know that. Wyndham and Michael Byrne, and now Travis Preston on the number 11, working his way into the scene. James Stewart is out in front along with Davey Millsap. So I understand that Ricky called James in between motos to uh, you know tell him to take it easy and wish him well. Well, I think those guys both know that, that uh, with one of them out, there's not a lot, another rider out there that can really run that pace. So Ricky doesn't want to jeopardize having another rider on the team get injured. Ricky takes the Motocross of Nations race very seriously. He kind of inherited that from Johnny O'Mara, who is his longtime trainer. And there was a lot of patriotic uh, feeling towards that race back in the 80s and early 90s. And then it faded away a little bit. And uh, Carmichael's sort of trying to bring that back as, and, and lead the team, be the captain over there, and, and get these guys fired up on the event, event and make them understand that it's, it's a big deal to go over there and represent for the United States. Well, we certainly hope that Ricky will be able to represent on the motorcycle and the motocross to nations. Looking forward to the matchup between uh, Carmichael and Stefan Everts. It's Timmy Ferry on the number 15 machine. Pulls in into view here. Nick Way on the number 27, running in sixth spot. Good run for him, and just behind him, it's the 15 of Ferry. And Mike Brown's right behind them on the number three. I wonder if any of the fans out there are wondering if they're seeing double. A couple too many Coors Lights seeing two number threes out there. Well, I'm trying to imagine how anyone but me could be confused by James Stewart riding a Kawasaki and uh, Mike Brown, number three, riding a Suzuki. Now. You have to be deep into the six-pack to make that confusion, I think. Well, by this point in the day, believe me, they're deep into a 12-er. <laughs> All right, then. Down the hill they go. Down one of the many hills they go here is Michael Byrne. Leading the way there over Nick Way, number 27, and the 15 of Ferry. Good little battle going on here. Six, seven, eight spots, I believe. Maybe a little higher up than that. I'm trying to recount them again. Your leader is James Stewart. And then it is Davey Millsaps in second position. And Kevin Windham third. And this group right here. You've got to wonder also if Ricky can't ride, if his shoulder is hurt too bad, who will they send in his place? At this point, they've already got, uh, got a Suzuki. Suzuki planning on going. Maybe they send Ivan Tedesco as teammate. Maybe they send Kevin Windham, who was part of the winning team last year. Maybe uh, they send David Pingree, my nominee for Motocross to Nation substitute rider. That was a little bit of an interesting move, and I'm sure we'll see more of it. Here's our Toyota leaderboard. We'll be back. Carmichael, who is already on his way home to see just what the extent of his injuries might be. We've got some hubbub going on here among the Honda mechanics in the uh, mechanics area. That's coming Wyndham in, That's Kevin Wyndham's coming in on the number 14. And it's never good when you're behind the banners and two guys are working on your bike in the middle of the race. I can't see what they're trying to clip out, but something. Aaron's back there trying to get a peek at it. Well, they're, yeah, it is kind of an interesting area that they're working on. They're zip tying something up on the right side shroud there behind the radiators. I don't know, something going on. Maybe the shroud was just flapping loose. James Stewart leading unchallenged at this point. As we wait for the second rider to come through, there's Millsaps, probably eight or nine seconds, maybe 10 between them. And you got to think with, you know, with, uh, with that nice little cushion, maybe Stewart is backing it down. He had sort of specific instructions from his team captain, Ricky Carmichael, to take it easy. So he's got a nice little lead. No reason to push any harder than he is. Kevin Windham from third to 10th place after stopping in the mechanics area. So now he comes up behind number 12, David Villeman, on the Yamaha. Villeman finally uh, got his plans set in stone for next year. He'll be staying here in the U.S., riding for the MDK Honda team. 
great news for all those DV12 fans out there. Windham making a pass on Villeman there. Moving up to ninth position and trying to head back towards the podium where he was racing in third, third spot before pulling into the mechanics area. Still not exactly sure what was going on with K-Dub's bike down there, but they zip-tied something back onto it and he set sail again. Obviously something came loose, just hard to say what it was. It, maybe a radiator mount, maybe that shroud like you said, um, possibly some wiring, uh, who knows? He's showing good speed though as he has gone past Villeman and is now probably a man riding a little bit angry. And for Kevin Windham, it could make a dent in that runner-up in the championship position that he currently holds. The championship having been decided, of course, and Ricky Carmichael earning the number one plate. James Stewart, leader in Moto number two after winning Moto one. So a 1-1 one -one will give him an overall win as first in quite some time. Since Washougal, to be exact, his Moto win came in the second Moto there. Back in seventh position, Mike Brown on the other number three, and it's a yellow Suzuki for those of you that may get confused. And James' last win at Washougal came at the, at the hand of Ricky Carmichael's uh, crash that he had there. Uh, actually had a couple of them. Spectacular crash, we might add. And the, the other win he had, obviously, at the season opener in Hangtown, uh, where it was a pretty heads-up race, and James just got the better of it. Mike Brown, the great veteran rider on his Rockstar RMZ motocross machine. He uh, looks like he's headed backwards. Something may be going on with him. Mike Brown oh. pulling over to the side of the track. Not sure what's going on there, but maybe he thought we wanted an interview at that camera position. Now he's just waiting for a while, and uh, he's going to go back into the race. Not sure. What was that all about? Well, we're not sure. But we're pretty sure that James Stewart is leading in moto number two here at Glen Helen to finish up the 2006 Toyota motocross season. Moving forward by Suzuki, lightweight, superior power, incredible handling. It's why champions choose Suzuki. And by Dentine Ice, go bold. James Stewart, number three in the motocross to nations, riding his livery to victory here in moto number two, apparently, as Davey Millsaps is running a somewhat distant second position right now, just does not have the speed to make up any ground on Stewart, even though Stewart may have backed down his pace just a little bit. He kind of went by the mechanics area, pointing down at his bike, too. It's strange that they're all having these uh, problems today. Well, the mid... The mystery problem for Mike Brown is still the one that kind of uppermost in my mind. Long shadows starting to draw across the racetrack here, and uh, with the bright sunshine lying low on the horizon, visibility's got to be a little bit of an issue coming up over some of these big hills. Yeah, these second motos, when you're riding up those hills, you're just staring at the sun. You one of those little boxes with a pinhole in it that you'd look at a solar eclipse with. You know, that's what you need mounted to your goggles. Welding, a welding helmet. Davey Millsaps on the Honda number 118. Good, good, solid season for him this uh, this year, moving up to the big bikes and conducting himself with a great deal of, uh, of dignity and success. Travis Preston running in third position right now. That, that's going to give Preston a, a third overall if, if positions stay the way they are right now. Wyndham having to pull off to make that little pit stop to tighten something up. Not sure what it was, but that's going to definitely cost him in the overall. I think uh, he'll still hang on to third overall in points as the championship points are concerned, but he's going to lose the podium spot today. Millsaps running in second position in this race. Again, doing a good job here in the 2006 outdoor season, moving up to the, four, the C, CRF 450. There's Travis Preston running in third spot also on American Honda equipment. Preston riding in third place this moto uh, is another guy without a job for next year. Maybe he and Michael Byrne can get together and start their own team. Well, the silly season is pretty much in full swing. As you said, a lot of riders have already signed deals for next year, but in every form of motorsports, what we call the silly season is at the end of the year when there are empty seats uh, coming available and usually more riders to fill them. Hey, look at James doing tricks here in Moto2 as well. Did he get his heels to touch in that one? I didn't see. 
Well, Couldn't tell. there are no judges at trackside because races are decided by who finishes first, not who looks the best and does the biggest trick. James Stewart, though, entertaining the crowd, as he said, with the championship out of reach, that's what he wanted to do was just put on some good races for the fans and, and uh, work on his form uh, going into the Supercross season coming up. Well, next year's a big year for him. He's going to be expected to come out and be the guy to win the championship. And, um, these guys have been working real hard on that Kawasaki 450. Uh, the 07 is a great bike. I've actually already ridden it, and I, and I know they made a lot of improvements to it to sort of give James a great platform for 2007. And looks good for him. Well, James has won moto number two and the overall here. We'll take a look at our highlight. Well, the highlight was certainly the racing that went on between Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart until it ended with Carmichael's get off, which we did not get on camera. So we will not be able to see just how hard he hit the ground, but Carmichael has left the, left the premises and is not here at Glen Helen any longer, and whether he'll be at the Motocross the Nations in England remains to be seen. But James Stewart soldiered on without his principal rival and his friend. You heard him say that these two guys are close, and he, they even consider themselves teammates. There is Carmichael post-crash, favoring that left shoulder rather heavily. Well, that was the most interesting part of the day, those two battling back and forth, and then Ricky going down but it uh, doesn't affect the overall championship points as Carmichael already had it wrapped up. Our Suzuki Moto results running the results all the way down. Lots of Hondas in the standings, but the Kawasaki of uh, Stewart on top. By all the sweat rolling off his body, you know that he gave it everything he got out there. Travis, this is the first time we've seen you up here on the podium this year. Why the whole season not being up here and then suddenly today at the last round? Well, you know, luck was on my side today. Ricky fell, uh, Kevin's bike broke, but you know what, I'm taking it. I rode good today and I'm, I'm happy. Well, Preston's always been the kind of guy to just call it how it is and uh, doesn't do anything different today, showing off the pecs there. Our Dentine Ice overall results, Stuart Millsaps and Preston with Kevin Windham fighting his way back to fourth. Davey Millsaps on the gas today, not only getting the whole shot. Davey, the last couple of weeks you've been struggling a little bit. Today you were able to put it all together. What made the difference? I don't know. It's the last race of the season. I wanted to ride good for, uh, for Honda, my mechanic, my mom, and my whole family. Um, you know, I just, I felt really good second moto. Our racer X whole shot went to Davey Millsaps, although it was close with James Stewart. Watch uh, the white uniform of Millsaps and going way around the outside with Stewart, but not quite quick enough to take Millsaps at the line. He did, of course, lead the race and the championship point standings. This was long ago a, a foregone conclusion, but Kevin Windham was able to hang on with the fight back to fourth place and edges Millsaps by a mere seven points in the standings. One thing about James Stewart, he always wants to win, but today this is not exactly how he wanted to win. James, you're out there riding your own race, basically. What's it like, and how is it? How are you able to motivate yourself when you're that far in front? I mean, uh, just having a good time. You know, I just put it on cruise control out there. You know, it was a little sunny. You couldn't even see going up the hill. So I uh, just had to make sure I got up front and uh, didn't get any ruckus back there. And uh, it's motivating. It, it feels good to win and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, the first motor, sorry, Ricky's not out. And, uh, you know, like I said, we traded off almost every weekend, so it was great. Well, there's the Rock and Roll Trophy for the winner here at Glen Helen and a very, very entertaining 2006 motocross season. Ping? That was a great year. You know, we saw big crashes, good racing, and uh, at the end of the year, same as it ever was, Ricky Carmichael's a champion. Well, on to the future. What the future holds, we don't know, but we will look forward to it. For Aaron Bates and for David Pingree, I'm Brian Drever thanking you for joining us all season long. We look forward to next year.